Hello guys. Welcome to our outdoor lunch on the deck. I lunch on the deck say. again. Yeah, we're eating all homegrown stuff here. The meat is actually deer from Quake Lake. Yep. Um, what else? These are our potatoes, our tomatoes. And our pickles that I did. And we, these, let me get this done. Um, these potatoes, actually we were canning potatoes yesterday. And people were wanting to know what we did with potatoes. And I had a few potatoes left because I had a little too many jars. And so I put them in the fridge. And so the potatoes are already really cooked. Because I went ahead and boiled them longer after I knew I filled my jars. I went ahead and boiled them so they're done. And I put them on this little tray. Show my tray. This is what it looks like. And we put it in our grill. Our Danny, grill. Danny got me a grill for Mother's Day. So I am enjoying the grill, guys. And um, so the potatoes have a smoked taste to them now. They were actually boiled mm -hmm. and then smoked. And they have salt and pepper, and that's basically it. Yeah, we learned that by putting your little cut-up potatoes like that on the grill while you're grilling your meat in something like this little tray with the air holes through it, gives your potatoes a real smoky taste to them. And it's actually, they're just, it's just really good to me. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. And need some horseradish on the venison. Okay, we got a bug. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Alderman Farms. Blueberries, weeds, and an apple tree for lunch. Yeah, that's right. Well, actually not. No. I, we were just going to talk about the things that was going on, but on our plate, we always tell people what we're eating. And the blueberries, they're about three weeks early. They've yeah. already started. Um, this bug is going to have to All die. Right, just what they call them, air conditioner bugs. But Yeah, yeah. You guys, if, if it kills a bug on live YouTube, oh well. Um our blueberries are starting early. We've got to go to Danny's dad's and pick some. But we're having issues. Yeah. It's too dry. It's just too, so dry here. Our blueberries are actually shriveling up on the trees and just falling off. I mean, they're not even they're not even maturing. We don't have our well completed over by the blueberries yet. We've got it drilled. We've got the uh, we've got everything but the electrical wire to run it with. We've got the pump mm -hmm. and everything. And we got started on other projects and then the all winter and then we started on all our fields and stuff so hopefully he'll get our well going in the next week or two if we can and but it's maybe too late for the blueberry crop this time we just dropped the ball on that you know right um alderman says it's too hot to eat outside you ought to be under the shade tree this Isn't tree that? is awesome this tree is awesome here on our deck it shades it as a matter of fact it's um it's probably 20 degrees cooler right here than it is out mm -hmm. there in the sun yeah, if you're in the sun, you couldn't stand it five seconds. Yeah. Um, here is wonderful. That's why Danny let this tree grow. Now, midsummer, it's probably going to be pretty pretty warm. But well, it's, right it's 94 outside right now. If y'all want to know what the temperature is, yeah, <laughs> it's 94 degrees, and it's just. And it's nice. It's stifling, out here. really, if you're out in the sun. But now, you know, us sitting right here in the shade. Sorry, guys. It's uh, it's not that bad. Plus, the wind's blowing, and that that helps a little bit. Oh yeah, the wind's nice. I don't know if y'all can see it or not, but it is blowing. You um, should be able to see the shadows on the table here moving. Mm -hmm. uh, to know that there's a breeze blowing here. Christy Betts says hers are shriveling too, even though she's watered them. We haven't watered because we, you know, it's too far for us to take a hose down there, but. We could take water in buckets and do it, but there's 50 trees. So when somebody says, well, just go water them, there's 50 trees. <laughs> yeah, it's more than it thing. It would take like five or six five-gallon buckets just to get some water some to them. Some water to them. And that's too much for us to do right now. And yeah. when we get the well, by next year, we should have the irrigation, the well, everything set up. And, and being in a, on a homestead is just a process. Yeah. You can't do everything all at once. We're, I mean, that's the deal. And other things took priority. 
and the well got put behind, even though all we like is the electrical wire, just hooking it up and getting it ready. Yeah. And so we dropped the ball on that one, but we will pick it back up. Yeah, it's a, uh, you know, Nunda was, Nunda made a comment there that it went straight from spring to summer. Mm -hmm. I mean, from winter to summer. That's exactly what it did here. Four or five weeks ago here, it was still so cold you couldn't plant hardly. Yeah, and then it just went boom. And then, bam, here we are. Uh, this whole past week, we've been in the 90s. We've had no rain for three weeks now. And the, the next 11 days I looked at, we're going to be in the in the mid-90s still. So, um, unless we get some rain, yeah. we're probably going to start losing some things. I know our neighbor, uh, the Lori family, is having to replace some of their trees that they planted because they, they just didn't work. they're dying because of the, the, the heat and drought. Yeah, and I wanted to mention Daryl from Two Family. Um, you guys keep him in your prayers. He's probably going to have a pacemaker put in sometime today. Um, he is in the hospital. Um, I, I spoke to Sherry a little while ago. Um, I actually messaged her, and she said it is looking pretty much like he's going to have a pacemaker. And then I saw she did a live stream. I jumped in for a minute. And so he is, I, I believe he's in intensive, I don't know, maybe intensive care? just so they can monitor him. But she sent me a picture. He looked like he was just hooked up to two or three machines, kind of like Danny does every time I take him in. Yeah. So we want to remember Sherry and Daryl because they are a big part of Deep South Homestead. <laughs> yeah. And um, let's see, what have we done this morning? We got up. Oh. We started about, we got up about 5 o'clock this morning. I got up earlier than that, but I cooked breakfast at 5. <laughs> um. After we ate breakfast, we jumped out the door and went straight to our garden. We I, were, I started tying. Well, we had to feed animals first. We were out the door by 6 o'clock. Yeah, by 6, we were already in the We were feeding animals and headed toward the field. Mm -hmm. We I tied tomatoes while Wanda hoed and cleaned peas out. Three rows. Three rows. Danny rows. did one, I did two. He, when he finished tying tomatoes. and Plus, I fertilized the tomatoes because it's been mm -hmm. two weeks yeah, we fertilize our tomatoes every two weeks, um, and I fertilize them. Uh, they needed a little bit of ammonia, and I needed a little bit of magnesium because of the mm -hmm. color of the leaves, so we took care of that. And we also, last night, did the sweet potatoes in that dust storm over there. Yeah, we planted and sweet potatoes. Looking at them from here right now, it's hard to tell if they're alive or dead. They may be dead. I don't know. I mean, that sun, it, it's so hot. And I've got a video going to come up on Crazy Days from this morning. And even though it's so hot and it's powder on this hill over here, this back here where we were at this morning, I'm going to show you what it looked like. It was powder on top, but it's not all all dry. It's wet. Yeah. So different places on our air, on our land has different soils, different types, different things. Yeah. Um, so... The weeds is one thing we've been battling today. Yeah, we've been um, battling them bad. The Kogon, we've got a video coming up on what we're doing with the Kogon and what we're going to continue to do. Uh, a lot yeah. of people didn't understand the Kogon grass. They, um, that is a, that's something that you just don't kill with just anything. So we're trying. We're it. trying some alternatives. And if it doesn't work, we do have to go to Roundup and other things yeah. if that's it. Because we can't have it on our place. It literally, you don't grow anything where it grows. Nothing grows there but Kogon grass, right? Right. Plus, we started taking our, uh, we picked our last English peas this morning. Mm -hmm. We'll begin taking the English pea vines out of the garden because they're completely dead now. They have no green left on them at all. We've, uh, we're having to water the Cherokee garden just to keep it alive. And let's see. I watered the Back to Eden garden. I had to water it because everything in the Back to Eden garden was wilting down. And I watered the herb garden. She, she watered the herb garden. And y'all, the herb garden's right here at the house, and I water it sometimes every morning and at, and late evening, and it's still not. I mean, it it looks nice in the morning. Yeah. But late evening, it looks droopy, and the sun is just tough on it. 
and the greenhouse is completely over now. <laughs> uh, I went out there this morning about 9.30 in my greenhouse. It was 150 degrees in there. <laughs> That's where the doors open and the windows open and everything. So everything in the greenhouse is dead. Uh, Joe Mama wants to know, how do you start your yams? I guess you're saying sweet potatoes mm -hmm. with slips or straight in the ground. We start with slips. We have how many out right now? We put out 125 yesterday. We already had 250. So we got three, 375? Yeah. And we're looking to put 125 more out. Yeah. Um, probably later this week or first of next week. And we grow our own slips. Yeah, unless we, we don't have enough and they finally get them in in town. They haven't even gotten any in in town yet. That's kind of strange, too, because they, usually they yeah. have them in, in town. By like first now, of May. By the first of May, and they have they haven't got any yet. So. Mhm. Mm um. Sharon said she's having to pay water. She doesn't have a well. Oh. That can get expensive. That can get expensive. That's why we urge everybody to to at least get you a well. Oh, you some know? type of water source on your place. Yeah, I know a lot of places you can't do it, but. I'm a water person anyway. I would have to. I would have to move if I didn't have water. <laughs> yeah, and the other thing is our apple tree. Yeah. Uh, I put up a video showing what happened to it, and I all I said was woodpeckers. So Danny needs to elaborate on woodpeckers because we're getting a lot of people saying we have a. We're issue. getting a lot of flack because people are telling us we got insect problems in our trees, mm -hmm. which is totally inaccurate. We use probably use the wrong word. Mm hmm We call. We call all these birds that peck on trees woodpeckers, well, but it actually, is, but, but it is a woodpecker. But actually, the bird doing the damage in the tree is a sap sucker. Total different. Totally different altogether. He goes around. All the trees in our place here have places on the oak trees. I mean, no matter oak trees, pine trees, apple trees, the mimosa, the mimosa trees, everything. This bird just pecks rows of holes around it everywhere. So that the sap will run out of the tree, and he'll come back and then peck on the sap. And plus, the sap has a sweet scent, mm -hmm. and it draws insects to it. And when they get in the sticky sap, they get stuck, and he comes back and eats the insects. Mm -hmm. So it's probably maybe our fault that we use the wrong word. Yeah, we I probably, should have said sap sucker. We probably should have said sap sucker because everybody mm -hmm. keeps telling us we need to do treat this the and tree. treat the tree and treat this and we have treated the trees over the years danny paints yeah. them white we do things to keep insects out um we don't have an issue with that the the whole apples everything look awesome and we hardly ever have any worms or anything even in the apples right but the deal is if we it says to cover the area where the sap sucker is and keep it covered so they'll go away well, if we only had one sap sucker, that might would do yeah. pretty good. But we have 7,000 acres behind us where they live in multitudes. And they come out and we hardly ever see them. And then somebody says, if you kill them, you know, well, there again, I'm not sure if they're on the endangered species list or not. But um, and what it really don't matter to me <laughs> if, if we catch them. Yes. But do you realize how many we would have in this area? Danny would have to sit out here all day long shooting yeah. squirrels, rabbits, raccoons, possums, birds of like any variety imaginable if we kept everything totally. And I guess some people think you do that. <laughs> they probably do. But he doesn't because we have all these predators here and it would mean we would constantly have to be outside trying to kill something. And that's not who we are. We only kill things that we see in our stuff doing the damage. Uh, Grizz, it's not it's not the yellow bellied sap sucker. What kind of it's is a it? little one, he's about he's about three inches tall, if that tall. Uh, his tail feathers come off to a real sharp point on the ends, and he's got little uh he's got black and white stripes on his back and kind of gray. And he does. His breast is not white. Now it does have a it does have a dingy yellowish look to it. But the uh, around here, what we call a yellow belly sap sucker is a big old tall bird. He's about six or eight inches tall. But this bird, this is a little small. This thing. little bird ain't three inches long, and he just flies in there and then he just goes to work and 
it's it's just aggravating as all get out because they're they get in our oak trees. I mean, they're everywhere. Peach trees. And if you're not a good shot, shooting a little three inch bird is really tough. Or you can hit your tree. Yeah, because they're so small. Yeah. So it's it doesn't pay to try and sit and shoot them, especially since I don't ever see them. Um, we do have lots of birds here though that do lots of damage. We couldn't keep predators out of everything. That's why we plant so much, guys. Christy says she needs a bird book. Yeah, I do too, because I'm always listening to the birds, and I'm telling Danny to tell me what kind of bird makes this sound and what makes that. And Yeah, God gave man dominion over nuisances. If we catch them, they're gone. But it's got to be, you know, we're not outside 24-7 paying True. attention. But Danny catches some of the things at different times yesterday he caught a couple of things and um i had to eradicate a few animals yesterday let's just put it that way yeah we were sitting here eating just while, well, while we're sitting here eating a big old hawk just flew right in front of us right here and went right down to the mm -hmm. woods back over here and i, I was, it's always something when you have seven thousand acres of wilderness behind you that borders your property mm -hmm. it's almost impossible to keep some sort of wild critters off of your property that's why we have to leave live traps set year round here mm -hmm. to catch as many things as we can we know right now we have a possum coming back on our place here because we saw here in the yard where he used the bathroom and in the dust i could see where or what, down here at my gravel pit i see where he's been walking in the, the little bit of a muddy spot there i can see his feet tracks so i know he's coming back plus which, in the garden yesterday we saw yep, tracks of i'm a not fox. I think yeah, that was I think fox. it was the fox. So even though we've got the woven wire around our place now, that fox is still getting in somewhere. He's going through the holes in that wire. Mm -hmm. Because the fox can go through a tiny hole. So even though we put that up, that's not going to keep smaller animals out. And deer can even jump it. So yeah. it's not even the woven wire is not going to keep everything out. No, but it keeps. Well, the main reason we put the woven wire was to keep. Our the neighbor, stuff in. <laughs> was to keep the neighbor's dogs out, possibly the coyotes, and to keep our animals in. And if our neighbor's animals get out, they can't come over here and eat our garden and stuff like that. I mean, we there's, there's multiple reasons why we fenced everything. Yeah, Christy says her, she's missing her eggs. We are too. Ours is just not laying like they should. Um, I don't know if it's too hot. Um as many as we have, I should be getting a dozen or more eggs a day, and I'm lucky to get. We're lucky if we get four, four or five. Yeah. And but we have the new ones coming on, and they should be laying, hopefully within a month or so, I month, hope so. month and a half. And when they do, these older ones are going to freezer camp. So if they don't kick in and start laying eggs, they get fixing to go by. Yeah. Because I don't like feeding something that I'm not getting something out of. Right. Mm. Grizz said he don't worry about the possums and the coons. He worries about the city rats that come out there and camp around him. <laughs> we don't have any of those, I don't think. But I agree with you, Grizz. Well, some people I've heard do have um, people that come around their area and will slip into their garden if they don't have fences around yeah. and stuff. And Guys, it may get worse, and, and if people can't get their groceries, they'll come into your gardens and stuff. Danny and I just live so far from town that the ones we have to worry about would be neighbors. Yeah, you know, we've got pretty good neighbors, so we don't have to worry about that. How do you keep out cats? Well, right now... We don't have a cat problem right now. Used to, if we did, I just eradicated them. But, I mean, we had we a cat that wanted to stay under our porch, and I'm not sure whose cat it was because... <clears throat> Yeah, he, that was neighbors. during the winter time when it was so cold. I yeah. found him living under my house. He was going through a tiny hole getting under my house. Yeah. And we have several neighbors that have a cat that looks like that. So we're not sure if it was one of theirs or a wild one because people are always throwing wild yeah. their strays out, I guess you should mm -hmm. say, because we're so far out in the woods that people tend to do that. Um. But I haven't seen him back. I don't know if what happened to him. He might have just went home. I don't know. Yeah. So, basically, we wanted to just wish everybody a pleasant week. Hope you had a great Mother's Day. Um, tell you that I did. I had a great day Saturday with my kids, some of my kids and grandkids. 
uh, enjoyed Danny got me a grill so I'm I'm pretty good I'm liking that um, wanted to show you our potatoes and stuff that we did and how I did them because some people were asking about that so I'm gonna start trying to show some recipes along um, yeah wanted to talk about two or three things that people were saying here and there and just kind of straighten some of that up I mean with the woodpeckers and the the dust and everything the blueberries Hopefully, if we can get to his dad's this week or next week one, we will show you the blueberries out there. They're usually gorgeous. Now, with the heat, who knows? Who knows, yeah. But uh, we did a video or two last year and the year before on the blueberries, and they're they're just simply beautiful. There's Freedom Makers. Um, Hi, Miss Amanda showed up. <laughs> Grizz says we can pack cats and ship them to him. Ah, um, so th there's a lot of people just kind of talking, but we also, we probably going to get off. We just wanted to jump on, talk about a few things, yeah, we're throw it out, out here there. Living this luscious homestead and lifestyle. <laughs> Sometimes it can be tough though. It can be tough. I've already canned seven quarts of potatoes and I'm fixing to go back in and quart and do seven more quarts. I did 14 quarts of potatoes yesterday. That's on top of everything else that we've done. I'm trying to keep the canning going. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, we were. Danny's going to pray for Daryl before we get off. Uh, we mentioned Daryl a while ago, and we are going to have prayer for him. But, guys, homesteading's not easy all the time. I think Brian's figuring that out next door. Yeah, it, it takes a lot to get everything in place. And like I told you to start with, we don't even have everything in place because... We dropped the ball with the whale, the second whale, and let yeah. it get away from us. And here our blueberries need water, and that didn't happen. Right. So we've got to get that. But there's always something that comes along. Always. And Danny and has a porch time coming tomorrow, talking about some of the things that, you know, like doing things when you have to do them. Yeah. Because... Right now, our potatoes is important. Um, I'm finding potatoes that are have bad spots in the middle. The potato, look looks, the, the potato looks perfect. It looks great. But if you slice it open, there's a black spot in the middle. So if I'd put that potato in my jar, uh, jar or if I'd put, put it in, in the, the cellar. cellar, we would have lost them. And yep. so we're having any potatoes I'm canning, I'm having to slice them for sure. The bigger ones are really bad. But it's the weather. It's um, our humidity. Uh, we're going to be able to save a lot of them fresh in the cellar, but we're going to save the medium ones. Somebody said something about we didn't get a whole lot of big ones. I'm really thankful we didn't get a lot of big ones. because yeah, almost all of our big ones are rotten in the middle. Yeah, almost, almost anything every one of them. that's up this size is rotten. Anything that's about, what, softball size is really, they're good. Um. What do you think about the storm brewing? Uh, if you're talking about the one coming over Florida, we hope it makes. We it hope here. it makes it here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know that we may sound it. bad. We need it. We need the rain bad. All right, there's a bug again. Ah, uh, that's one of them air conditioning bugs. He ain't gonna hurt you. Um, how many times should I cover my potatoes when they're growing? Um, uh, what do you mean cover them? What are they? I think he's talking. I think they're talking about healing the healing them up. up. We only heal ours up once. Uh, we just when, when they start up. growing, when they get to be about six or eight inches high, we just pile a good bed of dirt up around them, and we don't usually have any more problems after that. Somebody says, "So there's nothing you can do to stop that from happening." Potatoes? No. No. Um, what it is when we dig our potatoes out of the ground, they're just like they come out of an oven. The ground is so hot that the potatoes are actually hot in your hand when you pick them up and because it's so hot and so dry the ants go to the potatoes and they burrow a little tiny hole in the potatoes and then that potato begins to deteriorate from that point and it goes to the center of the potato and it uh, literally just rots it from the inside out so we have to cut every potato when we go to put them in jars Ge geeky garden says you're going to send us some rain when they get there oh okay they'll send us the surplus um yeah, Amanda's saying, you know, that I handle the kitchen real well. It comes from 
my OCDness, I guess, because I said Danny does canning one way, and I do. We basically do it the same way. He's just different in how he does things. Yeah. Um, he's OCD in one way, and I'm OCD in another. I set up a pattern, and I try to do like a. I don't know what I'm the word I'm looking for. Uh, like a chain, what assembly line type thing. I set everything up more assembly line type thing. And so I have all this done, ready for this, ready for that. And he's more one jar at a time doing this, one jar at a time. And I'm more, I've got this ready to go here, ready to go here, ready to go there. And then I'm filling jars. I'm doing it all kind of in a system. So we both have different ways of doing things. But mine is more, I try to think of assembly line type things and accomplish more in a shorter period of time. Um, I was trying to read some of the comments there. Uh, Rocky Brooks said they've healed theirs two times and they're still tall. Well, you don't worry about the plant being tall. Our, our potatoes will get two and a half to three feet tall. Mm -hmm. All you're really trying to do is keep the potatoes from being uncovered so that the sun hits them mm -hmm. and turning them green and, and get too much solanine in them. You just uh, want the potatoes covered. Yeah, you just want the potatoes covered. The plant, you know, ours... It doesn't matter with the plant. Yeah, ours gets up to our kneecaps or higher, so that's not an issue. Laura says they're still experiencing a cool spring on Long Island. It will be months before they can consider harvesting. Even lettuce has stumped. See, our lettuce is still the our lettuce, lettuce is still I growing. I forgot to go get some. Actually, I just watered it yesterday because it stays in the shade all the time. It's yeah. never in the sun. Uh, but it, um, it's still growing good. And I'm surprised because usually we lose lettuce like... Now, the romaine's gone. Yeah, the romaine's bolted. It's done bolted and making seeds for next year, but now the... The leaf lettuce... The leaf lettuce is still Cadillac. That's really funny because that's, we've usually lost it two months ago. Yeah, it's, it's Cadillac and right along. The, the Memphis and May Barbecue Festival is going on and it's always, it always rains during that, so I'll send some your way. Ha! Huh. Yeah. Nunda, that'd be nice if it'd come this way. We're hoping by Thursday. Well, they're saying late this evening we might have a chance of a thunderstorm. Might. It's a slim chance, but that system coming up on the south of Florida is pushing up in here, and they're saying that it might trigger a thunderstorm this evening. So we're kind of hoping and praying. Mm hmm. Amber Black says, I'm a little late. I was working on payroll. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I used to do payroll myself for my own company. I did for three companies. So. <laughs> what yeah. do you do if the potato plants grow really quick and start to snap? That's usually a sign there's too much nitrogen in the soil um, for them to grow that fast and, and snap off. All right, Azaline says, here in Nova Scotia, it is time now to plant crops that like like it cooler like the lettuces okay so they're kind of on a different yeah basis like we're going into the summer we're planting field peas and stuff like that and okra anything that likes the hot weather so nova scotia is looking for things that are cooler freedom makers her malabar spinach looks so good i have i've got two pot well the, one of them's in pot no both of mine's in both pot in pots I've got two different pots of Malabar spinach, and it is actually going on up, making its vines, and looking wonderful. Uh, Nancy says, can romaine lettuce grow indoors in a long planter? Does it take different nutrients? Uh, romaine lettuce needs to be kind of semi-shaded, and it needs to be cool. Uh, now, I don't know if you might get it to grow indoors if you got a sunny spot in a, in a room or something other where it can get some sun, but I mean, you're going to really have to work with it, I imagine, because uh, romaine's pretty finicky. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sherry, how's Daryl? She says she wants some Malabar spinach. I'll have to see if I still got some seeds. I did save some last year, but I can't remember if I done got rid of all of them. Did we sell them or did we? Some of them I did, but I may still have some because I did save seeds from the Malabar. Uh, let everybody know. Oh, she did. She said he's been admitted, going to have a pacemaker installed. Sounds like a car part. Yeah. Yeah. Tell Daryl that he needs new parts. Yeah, they wanted to put one in me, and I told him, I said, not yet. I said, I'm going to wait. <laughs> Julie's asking, how does Malabar spinach taste? That is one of the best things because I'm not usually a spinach person. 
but the leaves are small and it's perfect for salads. It's it is. awesome. Just walk by, grab a leaf and eat it. Anybody that's been here, if we're, they're, they're here and we're walking around, I give them a, a leaf off the Malabar spinach. Everybody's fell in love with the Malabar spinach. Uh, I got it from Jen at the Nut House, uh, JM at the Nut House, and she sent me a start. You go back and look. She sent it in a cigar box in a jar turned upside down, and I thought I got a jar of dirt in a cigar box. Yeah. It was the funniest thing ever. But when I dumped it out, there was a Malabar spinach plant in there, and I've saved my seed from that. Oh, let's see here. Somebody made a comment. Um, uh, Azaline said, I tried romaine indoors, and it did not do well. I have huge windows, too. I don't figure it's going to do well inside. I mean, it, some people might keep the house cold enough that it might do good. I don't know. Uh, we've never grown it inside. We always grow it in a pot outside and keep it in a shaded area once it comes up in the winter time or in the spring, should I say. And it uh, usually does pretty good. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's several people want to know about the um, Malabar spinach. If I don't have any, I'll get with Jen and see if she does have them and um, see about how she can do something about seeds because she usually is pretty good with seeds. Yeah, the Malabar is actually a warm weather spinach. It grows on a vine and you just pick the leaves off of it. And it grows through heat. That's what I'm talking about. It's a warm weather spinach. I mean... Um, so it's you don't have to have that cool weather like you have to have with regular spinach, and it doesn't have that uh, spinachy taste to it, you know, like like regular spinach does. Yeah. Uh, Kim says her Cherokee tans are starting to make runners. Good. I've got some up. Yeah. Ours hadn't made runners yet. They're about four inches tall already. Yeah. And now some... our our Hopi gray squash has little squashes on them. They're beginning to run. Our Georgia candy roasters are doing okay, but if we don't get some rain, I don't know if they're going to make it. Yes, Laura, deepsouthhomestead at gmail.com. Um, Amanda wants to know her okra isn't coming up very well. What's going on? I don't know unless it's just that dry, but it may not be dry where you're at. Mm, um, okra is pretty finicky. Sometimes it takes okra of weeks to come up. Yeah. Okra. Especially if you don't soak it before you plant it. And we didn't soak ours, and none of it's up yet. You planned it what, this week. And uh, yeah. some of the beans the lorries helped us plant, I saw were up this morning. So they're starting to come up. And these were speckled butter beans, right? Yeah. So the speckled butter beans like heat, so they're coming up. I don't know. We've... Uh... <laughs> We have a lot to do, and our problem is with this heat like it is, it prevents us from getting out in the middle of the day working. Hence, I'm tanning. <laughs> well, like yesterday evening at 7 o'clock yesterday afternoon, mm -hmm. we went back to the field to plant sweet potato slips. At 7 o'clock in the evening, it was still 91 degrees. Mm -hmm. Now, that wasn't the heat index. That was the temperature. And we worked from 7 o'clock till... It was after 8 when we come back to the house. And then we had to go feed animals and put everything up. But at that time of the evening, it was still 91 degrees. Mm -hmm. Hey, Food Forest Permaculture. Okay, so we're going to get off today. I'm about through eating. He is through. Uh, i got to get back in there. My pot's probably ready for me to take the jars out of the canner. I was letting it cool. and Mama Bear's homestead said, Any advice about turnips setting flowers before ready to harvest? My first year planting them. Uh, you probably planted them too late. And they got too warm and they're bolting real fast. That happened to us last year. That happened to us last year. Um, this year we got lucky. We had the grand solar minimum going on. It stayed colder longer down here. Um, and ours actually done fantastic. Uh, but usually turnips have to be planted... Right after the, I mean, right, you gotta, I mean, you gotta be really careful and get it right when the last frost happens because they don't need to be, I mean, they can grow in a frost, but they can't take a freeze. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Uh, what did Amanda say? Everything else is doing fine. Maybe she it needs has... more time. 
Yeah, probably because sometimes yeah. it takes as much as two weeks or longer for okra yeah, to come up. Yeah, it can take up. two to three weeks for it to come up sometimes. If the temperature's not right, the moisture's not right, okra's very finicky before it comes up. Huh. Okay, so we want to pray for Daryl right quick before we get off. And um, then I think, is there any more questions for you? We'll I don't see, see anything there. We're okay. just going to go ahead and have a word of prayer before we can get off of here. And um, we got. Get back to canning potatoes and doing other things. All right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Father, we want to come to you, Lord, uh, specifically on Daryl's behalf. Lord, he's uh, had some uh, heart issues this morning. Uh, he's had to be taken to the hospital. It looks like they've the doctors has come up with a solution of being able to put a pacemaker in. And Father, I pray that um, if Daryl has to go through this procedure, Lord, that it's a very easy procedure. Both my parents had a pacemaker, and they, they constantly went back to get the batteries changed and different things done to them. And it's always very minimal. And Father, I pray that everything will go well with Daryl and get his heart rate back up with the pacemaker and his life will go on and be, you know, as, as normal as it ever was. And, and Father, that everything will go well. And you give Miss Sherry the strength she needs to be by his side and take care of him. And Father, it's usually a very quick recovery rate on it. So, um, uh, and that's what we pray for. If he has it done today, he usually can go home the next day. But Father, we just pray that, um, that that'll happen and that Daryl will have real good success. You guide the surgeon's hands as they go in to do the work and and Lord, um, just bless them. Uh, they've been good friends to us. They've been good friends to the community and Father, we ask your blessings on them now. We ask this in thy name. Amen. Okay. All right. Didn't too much get by. No, I think we're okay. Um, so guys... We're enjoying everything. We're enjoying my new grill. And we will see y'all at least. We'll see you in the next video, which is tomorrow. I will see y'all on porch time tomorrow. Oh, y'all don't want to miss porch time. Yeah, either. porch time tomorrow. I hope y'all don't chop my hands off because I do porch time the way I did. But hey, y'all would have done chopped his hands off anyway. You would have so. done, done it before. So. It is what it is. Tune in for porch time. I'm going to get a crazy days up later today on the sweet potatoes from last. Let's see, or did I do the sweet potatoes last night? And it's already. Oh, I did the sweet potatoes. Yeah, that's the one that's up. That's the one that's up. That's right. I got to do the one from this morning with the weeding. Yeah. Okay. So we will have one up on crazy days later with the weeding. I'm sorry. I got to go do some canning. <laughs> yep, got to get back to the preserving of the food so we can survive on the homestead. Thank you, guys. See y'all later.